Here we go. I'm going to start my day with something that I call rapid fire bifacing. I got a little pile here. I'm going to try to biface these. Uh, all of these on video. The mix of uh, Georgia Church uh, heat treat and raw. This is a raw piece. I'm liking this Georgia Chert a lot. It's variable, right? It, it does vary quite a bit. So you never know what you're going to get. It's like a box of chocolates. But I like it uh, for two main reasons. One, for some reason, I don't have to dress this up very much to work it. It'll work whether I've got rock chips in there or an uneven surface or any kind of weirdness, it'll still nap. Number two, the yellow color is my favorite, all time favorite is the yellow chert. It has two very good things going for it. But the drawbacks are the variabilities. And sometimes it has inclusions. It does not heat treat consistently. Some of this will break up. You can, you can have two identical looking pieces next to each other in the turkey roaster and one will have heat pops and the other one will not and it looks the same it could be moisture content i don't know i should be more scientific with it but i have no way of judging what the moisture content is which brings up another topic uh, should i nap this while it's waterlogged and then if i want to heat treat it dry it out and heat it I don't use the technique of soaking this in water because I, I have no idea of knowing if it's soaked long enough I can soak it for a month or two maybe that's long enough but I don't have time to be sitting waiting for it to be soaking a month or two this is no no longer a hobby for me I'm learning how to do this professionally and I will teach you later on how to make money with it. One of the things that you don't want is a lot of unknowns. You don't want to guess and then teach people how to do it by guesswork. How much is enough water? I don't know. How long does it take for each stone in water to become waterlogged enough to nap differently? How does it affect it? Does it affect it a lot or a little bit? What stones are best when soaking in water? How many years of experience do you need before you can recognize if there's a benefit or not? All these questions, to me, in my opinion, soaking, the, soaking these in water and then napping them and then saying it works better is psychological yeah because there's no way of knowing how are you gonna know if it actually works better because every stone is different slightly different right every one of these is gonna nap slightly different they all have about the same moisture content but if you add differences in moisture content and they act differently how much more different are they acting do you have to nap 10 pounds 20 pounds 2,000 pounds of stone before you understand what the differences are I mean it's all variable it's all a bunch of unknowns but the psychological aspect is a big part of napping if you think it's napping better you will nap better, believe it or not. Your mental state, your, your, um, your optimism affects the napping. If you're napping angrily, you're going to have different results than if you nap happily. Oh, yes. To me, that makes more of a difference than whether it's waterlogged or not, or how much water you got in the stone.
Now some of you can be scientific about it and be wise guys and say, we can just weigh it, man. Weigh it before you waterlog it and then you can see. And then you can do a lot of tests by weighing. Yeah. Okay, do it. <laughs> Where are the tests? Where are the weight tests? All you waterlogging guys. And where are the comparisons? Where are all your videos comparing waterlogged versus non-waterlogged? Fully dry and fully soaked. Where are your tests? I want to see those. Or do I have to do that? Am I going to have to be the one to conduct those tests? I personally do not think it would be productive to do those tests. Because my stone and my results are different than yours. Oh, yes. You're going to have to experiment on your own anyway. Now, I could get your hopes up and make you nap better just by telling you what naps better. I can do that to you. I can manipulate you. And then you will nap better. Because your state of mind is extremely important when napping. I can make you happy. If I'm making you happy, you will nap better. Regardless of whether it actually does help or not. Water logging might actually make the stone less nappable, but if you're happy while you're doing it and thinking it's working really good, you're actually going to nap better. Oh yes. You may be napping stone that's actually worse to nap if you get down to the testing. But you're napping it better because you're, you're happy. All right? I hope that's clear. I do get into the testing between heat treat and non-heat treat. Because we know for sure that they, that the old nappers did that. They did learn to heat treat. And heat treating is over or at least 70,000 years old. 70,000 years old. 70K. They have found evidence of stones that have been heat treated and then shaped in southern Africa. Um, and other places. I think the oldest evidence and the data suggests 70,000 years is a good estimate. <coughs> Modern humans have been around for 100,000 years. The same brain capacity, right? Or thereabouts. We haven't changed that much in brain capacity until m much more recently. Like uh, 10,000 years ago, there seems to be a shift in our brains. And it probably has to do with language. But anyway, and culture. But anyway, the human brain has been the same for a long time. Between 70,000 or let's say 100,000 and 10,000 years ago. That's 90,000 years of the same brain, pretty much. So they understood <clears throat> heat treating. <clears throat> that didn't change. And then 10,000 years ago, when, our, when we made a shift again to uh, more, more capabilities, we're not going to forget this stuff. We're going to pass it on. And coming into the new world, even though <clears throat> uh, the dates seem to be 20,000 or 30,000 years ago, the first people in the new world came in. That's younger than 70,000 years, so they knew about heat treating when they came over into the new world. So the Native Americans knew about it. There is evidence of heat treatment in the Americas. A lot of artifacts are heat treated. You can tell by the change in color. That's primarily how they do it. How they assess that. They don't want to destroy the artifacts testing the structure of the, of the stone. They, they'll test the debitage and stuff, which is fine. And they have found that <coughs> heat treating was used. So I, I discuss it. But I don't, I don't discuss things like water logging the stone. Because... Nobody knows. If they say they know, it's BS. If they if they 
tell you it works better without testing, without showing you the testing results, it's BS. But it might make you happy and nap better. So in that respect, it's not BS because you're going to nap better. So I'm, I'm not against it. I'm just not going to do it. And I'm not going to be testing it. Okay. All right, next. So these, this is another raw piece. These flakes are not that easy to uh, biface. But, it, you, you know, I, I usually leave a large part of the original flake scar on this type of situation. I'm not sure if I should do this with the billet or not. Uh, one of my friends, uh, Nathaniel, asked me straight up, why don't I do a lot of abrading? Why don't I abrade? I came up with a quick answer uh, that it doesn't matter a lot of times because even if the edges crush, there's an effect called pre-crushing where when you strike on a delicate edge, if you strike high up enough it'll crush off the delicate part and then it'll start to bite into the biface or whatever and then take off the flake it'll pre-crush and then take off the flake i call it pre-crushing i told nathaniel that i don't tell you guys that because it could confuse the whole process but the abrading is not necessary in many cases not in the preliminary stages so I don't do a lot of abrading. I don't know, did I do a lot of abrading on this past one? I don't even remember. I was just in the zone. I mean, I let my, <clears throat> part of my brain go into the zone to do this. Did I abrade much on this? I don't know. You be the judge. But I don't do a lot of abrading because it's not necessary. And I'm also cheating because the artifacts that I've seen have very little abrading at this stage. If any. I notice a lot of artifacts don't have any abrading <clears throat> if they're bifaced. <clears throat> you know, there, you can find a lot of bifaces in these campsites and um, quarry blanks and stuff. You don't see abraded edges on any of this stuff in many cases. In some cases, I look at it and I go, yeah, that is not that sharp. But I can't tell if it's due to uh, the weathering effect over time. Is there bioturbation? That's another possibility. These things move around a lot in the soils and then the soils will bump the, the gravels and stuff in the soils will bump the edges and, and dull them. I don't know. But all I know is that uh, the artifacts that I do have a lot of times have just sharp edges and they were not abrading. So I cheat and I do the same thing. I say, man, those guys are taking shortcuts I'm gonna take a shortcut yeah it's expedient you don't need to be perfect at this stage you just don't break it and yeah you can abrade too much and then end up breaking your piece because it, it pulls too much here you've got a two, uh, striking area that's too strong you hit it really hard it pulls a lot and you snap the whole thing yeah there's there's pros and cons to everything and that includes abrading and when I brush sometimes I don't go yeah I don't need to go I don't need to do that little or that little or the shaping of the platform with the um, with the abrader or a hammerstone I don't go around and mm -hmm, nitpickety these things it's not necessary Nope. It might be necessary later when it's critical that these flakes come off perfectly, but right now they don't have to come off perfectly. I just have to make sure I don't break this. <clears throat> and uh, you can come up with an argument that abrading helps to not break it, but I, I have mixed results. Sometimes it helps, sometimes it doesn't. 
right now I'm uh, feeling that's plus pulling a lot I did dull that edge but it, I can feel it really pulling a lot so I, it's so I'm backing off a little bit all right <clears throat> I feel like I'm talking really fast because when I do this sort of thing off camera I do this very very quickly so my brain is sped up a little bit yeah I do this very very quickly I'm a little bit behind in my bifacing mainly because I had a few days <coughs> or several days last week that I got had the blahs I think it was two things the high pollen content and the hot weather but now I think I made the adjustment so I feel better All right, and uh, yeah, it affects my napping when I have allergic reactions to pollens and stuff. It affects how I nap. So I, I tend to not nap when I don't feel like napping. I only nap when I feel like it. If I force it, I end up regretting it. Okay. I am gonna get some indirect percussion strikes on this because it has a weird edge here I can get more precise and uh, just zigzag it than I can with a billet some guys can do this whole thing with hammerstone and be very precise I don't want to work that hard you can do this with a bopper too Copper bopper, aluminum bopper. I'm using the mostly flat, but I can use a round bopper too. I, I, I can do this thing on my leg too. I started that way like everybody else. I just developed my own style, which I encourage everyone to do. Develop your own style so that people can see that we're not just saying that we don't know how it was done in the past. We don't know how it was done because look, everyone's doing it their own way. Just like the, I think they used to do it their own way back in the day. They made their points differently in their own way. Right? Why not nap in their own way? Different point styles, different napping techniques. Yeah. funny thing is there's all of this uh, all these smart people are saying well the point style is determined by the the what you're hunting what the material is composed of what the tool stone is and the traditions of napping combined that determines the shape of the point yeah they, they think they're smart by saying that they don't look at the exceptions why is it that buffalo hunters for example just an example bison hunters why is it over time that they develop different point styles completely different point styles to to hunt the same animal and with those point styles there looks like there were different napping styles and different tool stones to, to hunt the same animal in the same areas you will find they use different tool stones different techniques and different point styles to hunt the same animal they ignore that why I don't know I don't know why people that are smart have a habit of ignoring well, I do know why. I, I say I don't know because it's just ridiculous how some people that are really, really smart will ignore the obvious. And they'll smart their way into being very stupid by ignoring the obvious. Obviously, their formula for how points are developed is wrong. 
if they say it depends on the tool stone and the napping style and the prey that's being hunted and the traditions that's wrong all right anyways I could ask, start asking trivia questions, right? Like, what is the most common animal remains in the Clovis campsites or hunting sites, like hunting camps? What is the most camp common animal remains? Is it bison? Is it deer? Is it mammoth? Is it mastodon? Or are they hunting a certain animal predominantly? What is it? The answer is not what you'd expect. And again, the smart people ignore it. What's the answer? White-tailed deer. Yeah. Why white tail? Well, most Clovis sites are east of the Mississippi. White tail is very common east of the Mississippi. If you look at a map of Clovis sites in the US, there's a huge number east of the Mississippi. In fact, most of the Clovis sites are in the woodlands, wooded areas, not open plains like you see in the illustrations. It's an open plain with grass and they're all ganging up on a mammoth or a mastodon or something. No, most of the Clovis sites are near water and in the woods. But, as smart people will do, they will ignore that. And they will say, can you draw a picture of an open plains people shooting mammoths with Clovis? Can you? To, uh, to uh, put forth our agenda or to support our agenda? Of course the artist is going to say, yeah, sure. Whatever you want, man. Okay. I gotta thin down this base area. I gotta get in the zone because this is the sweat stage on this particular piece. I don't wanna mess this up. Even though it's a raw piece and it's pretty strong, I could still snap this. I know what I, I know what I need to do. I'm having a hard time running some of these flakes because I'm not using the steel. Steel works a little bit better for me. I think it's because I've been using it so long. I'm gonna switch over. I like the, the aluminum because it is a little more gentle on the edge. But this stuff doesn't care about gentleness too much. I can get away with really abusing it. Oh, come on. There it goes. Yeah, I get the. If I get too aggressive, I get those mistakes. These mistakes. But at this stage, it don't matter too much. All right. I'll say that a lot. During this stage, it doesn't matter all that much. Ooh, this is thin, 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 so. 
Tiptoe, tiptoe, Anyway, I think many of you might be relieved that I'm not going to be talking too much about the archaeology anymore. Not only does it give me anxiety, but it probably gives you anxiety when I start talking about it. Because a lot of it is really... I don't know. It really is... Um, frustrating. Okay. I think you're learning something when it's not the that's not the case. But you know, collecting data and uh, recording data is not a fun thing, and it's very difficult. And knowing what to record is difficult. How do you, what's your strategy on recording data on a site? And I, I'm no different. I find it very difficult to record data, especially the time. My friend Dusty gave me a, a, a big collection. He let me borrow it. And I, I haven't collected the data on it. It would take me a month. I wish I could just take a month off and record all the data on the, the points that he let me let me examine. I got some videos on the artifacts that he loaned me, but I got to give them back because I've had them for too long and I haven't had a chance to record the data. Now, if you paid me to record data, like archaeologists are paid to do, yeah, it makes sense to, uh, to do it. But I noticed that they don't like really they don't enjoy the process of recording the data. What they want to do is they want to interpret the data. Yeah. You know what happens when you don't like doing something? You don't pay attention to it too much. You ignore it. So those, those guys that don't like or don't enjoy the process of recording the data, it's tedious and boring and frustrating. Because accurate data collection is not easy. Sometimes the instruments are off. Sometimes the measurements you make mistakes. So they ignore a lot of the data. Or they just they may make doo-doo with what they got. They got poor poor data sometimes, but they'll make doo-doo with what they got and try to interpret what the data is telling them. Regardless, they just plow forward and then they'll smart themselves into being stupid. And then we don't learn anything. In a perfect world, they would just focus only on the data and let everyone else interpret it. And their job would be data collection and storage and dissemination. That's it. Only the data. No interpretation whatsoever. I think in a perfect world, that's what they would be doing. That's it. And interpretation of the data must be accompanied by experimental archaeology. 
you have the data, you try to recreate what the data is telling you. What kind of points are there? What kind of debitage? You recreate all that through experimental archaeology. And then from all your experiments, you figure out what's, what, what's the problem here? What, what do we want to learn from this? Now that we have a lot of these items recreated, reproduced and stuff, what's the problem? Well, we want to know what they were doing with this stuff and why they made them. So you ask the question, what, what are these for? So you test it on different things. Test it on plant processing, test it on hunting, test them on uh, mock battles, because warfare was a big part. You make... Uh, you you know you know you make uh, dummies uh, uh, with uh, that um, ballistic gel and you they shoot projectiles at them. See how they work on um, humans and animals. You know the mock-ups of humans, mock-ups of the animals. You can use real animals. I'm not really too keen on that aspect. But you don't know exactly what's going to happen unless you shoot it at a carcass. And that kind of thing. You experiment. You don't just hypothesize without experimentation. You figure out what the problem is, what you want to know. And you set up experiments so that you can try to gain insight into what's going on by actual hands-on stuff. No thought experiments. Come up with a problem. What's the problem? And then we try to find a solution to the problem. That's the that's that's the reasonable way. No, but a lot of these people don't know how to flint nap. They don't they're not survival people. They've never been in a situation where they had to make do with whatever to find food. And water, they don't know how to purify water without all these fancy chemicals. They don't know anything except their thought experiments. That's what they know. But I won't talk about it. I'm just going to, I'm just going to uh, vent. And that's it. Do a little testing on the side myself. Yep. Got a crack in there. I don't know if I can get rid of it. So is it is this is this easier? How much easier is it when it's heat treated? It's easier to flake, but harder to do the damage control, I think, because it's very crackly sometimes. Uh, should I be using the aluminum on the heat treat? Yeah, probably. You won't crush the edges as much, but I don't know. A lot of times you can get better results just by using a consistent tool, even though it might not be the exact or the most advantageous in theory. It, you may be using something that's not theoretically the most efficient. In theory, you know, you're supposed to use a softer tool 
if you're experiencing a lot of crushing and stuff. But there are ways to adapt to using a hard substance on crushy material. One of them is to abrade a lot. The other is not to hit so hard. You can use a wider tip of, you know, a tool with a bigger tip surface area. Spread out the shock a little bit so you're not concentrating the shock in one spot. That sometimes helps. There's all kinds of different adaptations. Some of them are subconscious and I don't know how to explain them. Sometimes you just live with it and say, oh well, crush edges, I don't care. Sometimes you live with it. And do you see artifacts that way? Yes, you do. They don't care. There's crushed edges and step fractures and all kinds of stuff on artifacts. They didn't go, oh man, look at all these step fractures. I shouldn't be doing it. I'm such a bad napper. <laughs> no, they didn't do that. I mean, it doesn't look like they did. If you look at the artifacts, you think they were ashamed of themselves when they had step fractures on the artifacts? They moped all the way home from the quarry. Here, I brought some stuff home from the quarry, but look at all these step fractures. I'm so ashamed. <laughs> no. Look at the big pile of debitage because I, I blew up all my other bifaces that were really big. Look at all that trash back there. I'm so ashamed. No, I don't think they did that. Someone would say, okay, go shame yourself over to the river and start shooting some fish. Go be ashamed over there. Don't come back over here and tell us you're ashamed. Key mob. <laughs> anyway. This is the critical stage. Yeah. I can't mess it up. No pressure though, right? No pressure. All right. Long ago, I abandoned the, the below or above center line rule. I don't care. I will lower the platform, the striking area or the platform, whatever. I will lower it down in some cases because I know that the flake will travel better that way. But I hit above center line, below center line. I hit all over the place in the preliminary stages. Yeah. It's not that big a deal. All right, I gotta make it more narrow. That's the only way to get rid of that cortex that I can see. I gotta zigzag through there. And yeah, it does lower the edge, you know, to create these striking areas. But sometimes, sometimes no, it doesn't, the edge isn't much lower. Now, can I leave the cortex? Is it is it vital that it gets removed? No, it's not vital. I can leave some of it. I can leave some of it on there. Oops, slipped a little bit. Do I slip and hit 
when I'm not supposed to? Do I lose control of the tools? Yes, I do. Let's see. I'm taking too long on this particular biface. Because it's got it's got some particular pain in the butt issues. You never know when this with the cortex you never know what's gonna happen. Sometimes it'll nap easily like that one. Pop, pop that off, but sometimes you don't get cooperation. I gotta cheat with the cheater tool. And I knock it down slowly. My advice is to knock it down little bit little by little. Don't try for the big old smackaroo right there or right here. Try to whittle it down a little bit. You'll be, I, I think you'll be much happier with the results if you just whittle it down little by little instead of trying to take a big old smackola. Super smack. Try not to do the super smacks. Unless you're confident that the stone can handle it. With heat treat, it could blow up. Yeah, that's the new flint nipping term. Well, it's not new, but I don't hardly ever use it. All right, that's good enough. I took care of the major issues. All right. see if we can blow this one up I broke this this is a big old piece broke it in half yep apparently I don't know when I did this one or if it came in the mail like this I think I did this Jeff usually doesn't send me pieces like this. He's pretty good at spalling. All right. Beautiful. Oh yeah, one another reason why I don't uh, do this on camera a lot is because I, I'm swinging really hard sometimes. And the camera interferes with the swings. I already busted my camera a little bit during the last napping. So I wasn't paying attention and I dropped it a couple times. On the debitage pile, the camera itself, or the phone, my phone, I dropped my phone in the debitage. And I broke one of the lenses that uh, shoots this way. There's three lenses that shoot this way. There's one lens that shoots back toward me. Uh, anyway, I broke one of the lenses, so now it it interferes with my with the with the photos. If I stick it on photo mode and take a picture, there's some glare, weird glare, and it's because there's a crack in the lens. I had to go get it fixed or something. Always something with the technology. The more technology you got, the more things can go wrong. So it seems. Sometimes I, I have to abrade because I can tell that's going to be crushy. I don't so I can get these big long useless flakes yeah but I'm looking for the biface not necessarily the flakes if I can get good flakes okay fine but this is just the biface bifacing session That didn't work out that well on this side.
Okay. Here we go. Need a couple big strikes to get us some big flakes, and then I can move on from this particular piece. Yeah. The billet is good for the big flakes. Now let's see if, if I can do this without messing it up. Don't like it. All right, I gotta refine it a little bit more before I take off some of the bigger flakes. And yeah, I do isolate sometimes. It depends on how bad the situation is. If it's really bad, I'll isolate. It looks like it's going to be bad. We'll see. Yeah, it's scooped out. Maybe some of the scoop out is due to the rotation of the, the biface as I'm hitting it. I'm trying to hold it firmly. Firmly grasp it. You, you, you sponge bob people out there, you know that, that line, firmly grasp it. <laughs> uh, Squidward was in a wheelchair. And they went to go jellyfishing. He couldn't use his hands to hold a net. And they were trying to teach him how to jellyfish. I don't know if he was incapacitated so he couldn't talk. I think he had like a bandage over his head and <laughs> his face. Anyway, they, they jammed the net into the bandaged hand. And Patrick says, firmly grasp it. <laughs> Anyway, I'm firmly grasping this. There we go. There we go. All right, so there, there it is. I just needed two big old flakes taken out. I can thin the rest of it down with indirect percussion. All right. I don't know where I put them so far away. All right. Yeah, I gotta get rid of the delicate areas. Can't do anything with those. I gotta go. Seems like a shame because it gets so much smaller when you trim off those delicate areas. But they gotta go. Mm hmm. never know what's underneath that that's the that's the problem you gotta know what's underneath the cortex gotta find out first before you before I start thinning this out because I might need that mass there later if this ends up being nothing nothing good 
I might need this mass, so I don't want to remove this mass yet. The worst first, in this case, the worst is the cortex. I don't know what's underneath it, so I got to find out. Okay, it's not bad. The cortex is not very deep, yeah, at least in that area. Yeah. All right, so I can do that. I can. Take a chance and get rid of that mess. Sometimes the prettiest stone is right under the cortex. Not sometimes, a lot of, a lot of times. In a perfect world, I'd be trying to get as close to that cortex as possible. So I can capture a lot of that swirly looking stuff in the final biface. But the world is not perfect. I'm just going to go with what I got. Yeah, and I was, I was talking earlier, I was, I'm thinking while I'm doing this, I was saying earlier that uh, what influences the, the point style? Is it the tool stone? Is it the, the thing you're hunting? Or is it the culture? I mentioned that uh, different cultures hunting the same animal use different tool stones, different cultures, and different napping techniques, different point styles. But the other, the other end is also true. They could be using, it could be the same culture. Same point, same material. And they're hunting different animals. They use the same style of points in the same tool stone, but they're hunting different animals. So obviously the prey is not driving the design of the point. That kind of thing. I try to look at all angles. Anyway, don't get off that subject. I should talk about ADHD. Adult ADHD. Apparently, it's not that common that uh, sometimes people can grow out of it or deal with it as they grow older, and it doesn't affect their lives as much. 
but I have a very good, I have a suspicious feeling that I've got adult ADD, ADHD, that's the new term. So I've been doing research on it, trying to keep an open, open mind, maybe I'm just stupid, <laughs> and I'm just blaming it on ADHD. Anyway. could talk about the latest the latest Instagram gurus on ADHD but I won't there's a lot of Instagram gurus in case you haven't noticed sometimes I listen to the dumb ones to know what what the latest agenda is because they don't have imagination they got to go by the latest agenda I want to know what the latest agenda is the latest narrative so I know what not to believe in yep because if it's just regurgitated without thinking and it's a little bit it's a little bit uh, suspicious Yeah. Suspect. Little a little suspect. If it's just a bunch of people regurgitating the same thing, it's a, it's like a rumor, you know, you just you don't know if it's real, you're just regurgitating it. They used to call it rumors back in the day. Nowadays, it's called unnamed sources. No. Unnamed sources translate. The translation is, uh, the latest rumor is, instead of, unnamed sources have reported blah, blah, blah. No. The r latest rumor is blah, blah, blah. And sometimes rumors are intentionally generated so that the person that it pertains to or the organization that it pertains to will say, no, that's not the case. This is the case, blah, blah, blah. And the people who started the rumor go, ah, so that is the truth. We got the truth out of them. <laughs> By saying something false about them and then they had to clear the record. Yeah. A sneaky way of getting the truth out which I don't approve of because that rumor stays out there a lot of times and even though they correct it people that are involved in it they admit to the what what it really is if the rumor is more appealing to the public they're not gonna forget it it's gonna stick and no one knows the real real story even though that might have been the original intent of the rumor to get the real story out eventually because they'll correct the rumor they'll try to set the record straight if the answer is hey we don't like the answer that's stupid the rumor sticks and no one gets the real answer or they don't care about the real answer Yeah, because the answer, the real answer is lame. It's not interesting. Sensationalism is destroying everything. It's destroying the information. The uh, information dissemination. It's not disseminated in many cases if it's not exciting. Or somehow it doesn't tingle everybody's funny bone. Yep. All right. There we go. 
That wasn't bad. That little flake right there. Are we done yet? No, we still got some. I need a thermometer in the shop so I can make a daily report on the heat. It's starting to get scorching hot. Yeah, this doesn't abrade quite as nicely. I thought this was a heat treat. It started out pretty dark, right? But it's not easy to nap. not easy what's happening ouch see that it scooped it right out that's a, a sign that the, it's it's tough so this is not a heat treat you might say use the billet yeah I can but I like the indirect percussion Okay, I can have more precision. Yeah, I can precisely snap it in half. If I'm going to snap it in half, I want to do it precisely. Yeah. Now that almost went. All right, good enough. Next. Another snappiola. I might have done this one on video. Did you miss it? I snapped a bunch on video not too long ago. Cost me some money. Yeah, nothing sharpens your senses than the, the potential loss of money. Oh yeah. No, come on. That's not right. A lot of times when that happens, it's, there's an incipient in there that messes messes up your day. Turtlebacks? We don't care about no stinking turtlebacks. No, not anymore. I used to have such a hard time with turtlebacks. Now I don't care about no stinking turtlebacks. No. I remember I used to have such a hard time with those. My goodness. Now I, I build up to them. I'll build up a turtle back in the middle just so I can smack, smack it away. That's not a turtle back. That's a square edge. Yep. You know what? You know what the favorite tactic is for square edges. You know by now, yep. The new guys are oblivious, but most of you guys, you know. Pick at it, zigzag it, whatever. Some are easier than others. Depends on the material, depends on how much stone there is in the square edge I can 
even depend on your mood. I can pretend it's waterlogged. It should be easier. Yep. And then I'll net better. I'm going to pretend there's water in this. Should net better. Because I saw water in some of it earlier. Yeah. There's a little hole with water. So this stuff's got water in it. It should net easier. Yep. So let's pretend it's got some water in it. All right. Looks like it's napping easier. Now that I said that. Yep. Oh, yeah, see? I didn't think I was going to get through that. But now that I'm thinking that it's, it's got water in it. Voila! It's got water in this, so this turtle back is going to be easy. Right? Yeah, see? It's got water. It's got water in it, so... I took that turtle back off easy peasy. That's why. That's why it came off easy. You didn't know? Now you know. That worked too good. It's got too much water in it. It worked a little bit too good. Yeah. Still having trouble with the square edge area, right? Gotta trim that off. Hitting that extra super hard, it doesn't seem to like it. Some of this is uh, very dry and rough, and some of it's kind of slick, very inconsistent. It's a little bit wonky. Come on. doesn't want to be symmetrical it's fighting the symmetrization yep. stupid water in it now it's the water is fighting the met, symmetrize, symmetrization yeah
The water let me take the turtle back off, but now it's fighting the symmetrization. You don't know. Right? Tell me I'm wrong. Prove it. Yeah. Okay, yeah, we got a little bit of it off. It's still really wonky, right? Because that, yeah. We have ways to symmetrize you. We got our ways. Ways to make you talk. I'm taking a little bit too long with these by faces. It's because it's the video. Yeah. Or it's something, something not that's not me. Yeah. I'll lay off the water thing because I know some of you guys really like soaking your flint in the water. This does look like heat treat for sure, right? It's got a lot of red in it. I don't know if I like the look of it though. Because of the cortex in this area, I'm gonna end up with something narrow. Then there's a hole right there. That's unfortunate. I would try to keep it in if I could, but I can't. There's a lot of cortex. And then when I take it back down to make it thin, it's going to lose that area. I used to sit down lower so I could put my tools back in front of me like this and then pick them up. But I'm up a little higher because my hips were hurting so I had to sit a little bit higher. And now I have a little shelf on the side. But for some reason, this won't move when I drop it there. But if I move, if I drop it here, it'll roll off. Don't make no sense. Yeah. Don't make no sense at all. <laughs> that hole is not too bad. It doesn't go all the way through like it looked like it went pretty deep. All right.
right, this is dicey because there's a lot of mess on the base that I've got to get rid of. Sometimes it's like the mama had a baby and her head popped off type situation. When you have a lot of mass down here at the base, the tip can pop right off while you're working the base or the base area. That's a beautiful color up top. I bet you if I left it longer in the heat treat, it would all of it would get more red. Right? Some of you experts on this Georgia chert can leave it soaking, so-called soaking in heat. It becomes more and more red. I bet you it becomes more and more brittle too. Yes. Betcha. I bet you it's gonna get you. That's what happens to me if I leave it too long. In many cases. It's beautiful color, but if I leave it too long in the heat treat, it gets all stupid. I used to take a lot of time working around obstacles and I would spend several minutes studying it, abrading carefully, isolating platforms, strategizing, working other areas first. And then I get down to spending several minutes on a bad area. And then just as I try to do the final cleaning up of that area, break it all. So I don't, if I'm going to break it, I'm going to break it. And I'd rather break it early on than later. I really don't have time to be messing. Yeah. Now you, I can get carried away with that too and break it without, without a, a good reason. And yeah, it, that is unfortunate and disappointing. And I say to myself, yeah, maybe I was a little too haphazard with that one. So it's a delicate balance. That's what's interesting about how the brain works. Yeah, just because a brain knows something doesn't mean it'll act upon it. And that includes surviving in the environment. Just because the brain knows that fishing is more productive as far as food production, the people on that spot don't fish all that much. They do something else. Why? Why, why would they do something else like sheep farming or something when there's a ton of fish right there? For food. You gotta take that into consideration when looking at ancient cultures. They know very well that they could be feeding themselves and not starving, uh, eating something different than what they're eating. But they refuse to change. Or they try to change and they're not successful, they get all miserable. Or they, 
they blame their failure on something else like no last time we went fishing one of our boats capsized so the gods of the ocean don't like us so we're not fishing <laughs> yeah bad luck stuff like that I wonder if that affects flint napping as well yeah last time we went to the quarry you know Ezra over there got hit by lightning so we're not going to that quarry no more no nope. yeah hit, hit hit me with lightning and now I can't do nothing <laughs> I forgot how to flit nap the lightning. It did it. Yeah, so the gods of the quarry don't like us no more. Nope. Good enough. Dun -dun -dun. Oh, this is almost already ready. Already ready? Did I just... I think I did this one last night. I was doing some of this last night and I said to myself this looks already ready I took a big flake off there it's it's pretty much bifacially bifaced to do that I, I tried to keep it from rolling off the darn shelf <laughs> see I, I whittled this down a lot last night it was about two inches bigger and I knocked it down I like this particular type of abrader I'm gonna have to get some more. I'll get some more soon. Just stick it on my Amazon shopping cart. I think they have them on Amazon. I don't know, I gotta look. I like to put them in my Amazon shopping cart because of the free shipping. Oh yes. I'm one of those free shipping very happy, very addicted to free shipping people. It got me, it got me hooked. I gotta admit. Yeah, I got a bunch of safer laters. I think I got 80 something, 89 st things safer laters. Yeah. So when I get up the money get one of my safer laters and then qualify for free shipping yeah I got something I need from Amazon like an abrader eight bucks or whatever but that doesn't qualify for free shipping so I go to my safer laters yeah it works beautifully genius Is that good enough? It's good enough. Yeah, if I start to mess with it. After I say good enough, if I start to mess with it, I start losing my mojo. Oh, dang. It's crunchy on that side. Dang it. Dang it. 
that shelf is not unlevel. And those things, they want to roll off like there's some kind of weird gravity over there. See, that one works on that side. What's wrong with the other side? I tell you. Sometimes a stone from one side to the next is all foolish. One side is smart, the other side is stupid. Still, still doing it. That's good enough. Oh, now we're getting to the small stuff. All right, small stuff. I don't have, I might I might stop the video right here because small stuff. I'm not too excited about it. I only use this small stuff when I have to. I'm thinking about collecting a bunch of these and selling them as clunkers. This one's already pretty much a by face, so never mind. I'll never mind that one. This one, this one's also kind of like a clunker. It's going to be pretty narrow. It's good for a narrow piece. All right, a couple of clunkers. That's it. I'll put those in a box or something. Uh, yeah, that's it. Rapid fire by facing. Hour and a half. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight by faces. Ha 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 ha. All right. There it is.